Welcome back. I think it's time for a long overdue update on the mineralization tank. These videos are brought to you by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GrowPockets.com, Aquaponics.ai, and GlassBottleOutlets.com. Thank you for your support. Before I get to the details, what's going on inside here, uh, earlier this spring I replaced the air stone with a uh, different airlift mechanism and uh, filmed all that. So I'm going to show that to you first and then we'll move on to that. The first thing I'll need to do is uh, drain out the water out of this. So I'm going to just close off the valve over to the um, settler and uh, drain the tank. And the only way to drain it is out of this uh, valve that I installed. The problem is, is that it's really close to the ground, so I can't get a bucket under it. Thankfully, I can just sort of stick this little fitting on the end. And I can drain it out this way. It dribbles out a little bit, but at least I can get uh, a lot of the water out of it. Once it gets down to this level, then I'll just sort of uh, drain a little bit at a time. Now that I have the tank drained out, you can see inside I do get some sediment build up along the sides just because it's not uh, swirling quite fast enough to keep everything moving. So hopefully with this redesign we'll get that squared away. The first thing I'm going to do is put a valve right here. Uh, that will allow me to isolate this section of the pipe from the water if I have to do maintenance on the uh, modified airlift. I don't have to keep draining out the tank. I can just uh, disconnect this one section and leave everything else filled in here. Before I get too far into the changes, let me explain uh, what I'm going to do. The original design uh, was just set up where there were a couple of air stones on either side here. And the tubing was just dropped down the neck into here. And it was actually fairly effective, but over time as the uh, solids worked their way towards this, I was starting to get just stuff accumulating on these air stones and clogging things up. And they really weren't producing as much air as I needed to get all that movement. So we're going to replace these uh, air stones. So zooming in on the area that I'm changing, this is that bottom section. I'm going to uh, add in that valve right here. That's just one of those sliding valves. Yeah, cut off the water. And then that continues up like this. And I'm going to cut the piping out right here and that continues up here. So this section that I cut out, I drilled a bunch of holes into it and then on this outer area I've added a piece of three inch piping. This inner one's two inch and I tapped this and put a an air fitting onto it. So there's actually a, a hole here and then there'll be a, a tube that goes off to the air pump. And to interconnect all this I basically took a two inch to three inch uh, rubber coupling and used it to connect everything uh, together. So this clamp, there's a clamp at the bottom that is right at this junction that holds those together and then there's another clamp up in here that holds that together. So this is still a continuous pipe but now I've created this chamber here where we can pump air into it and the air comes out through these little holes. And basically the water now can come right up past this and uh, the air is added in and there's no debris or anything getting into the side area.
Last thing we need to do is just install the, the tubing. Now I usually like to put a, a zip tie or a clamp on anything that's uh, below the water line. I just ran out so I don't have uh, any, but I am going to put a, a, a clamp on that just as a safety from it coming off. So then the, the tubing will run up and that way if uh, the power is ever lost, um, this is going to back flush with water and you don't want your air pump down below your water line otherwise you're going to flood out your air pump so you always want to keep that up well above the uh, water line. I made up this quick little manifold with a bunch of valves on it so that way I can adjust the uh, airflow going into this and then these other ones are just going to head off to the fish tank or something. So that's about it so we'll fire it up and see what it does. Now that everything's all plumbed up it should be watertight we can open up the valve again between the Radio flow settler in the mineralization tank and let that flood in again. Looks like we're going to need uh, these little overflow things to keep the water from shooting out. This is working pretty well. This pump is way too much uh, airflow for this, so I'm definitely going to have to send these other ones off to the fish tank or. Uh, install a smaller one or put another manifold in and send some of the air off into the deep water culture bed. The flow in here is working really well now. I have far too much air going into this air pump so I am blowing off some air right now. I have been experimenting with these channels. Uh, this one is bringing it in near the edge and this one I have angled and it's shooting it more in towards the center. I had somebody tell me that by uh, bringing it in uh, at a different angle, it'll be more effective with forcing it to swirl. But I haven't been able to find any documentation about that. So if you know of any studies on the perfect angle to have your inlet water come in, uh, just leave it in the comments and it would be greatly appreciated. You might remember from the original install, I had inserted this uh, stilling well in the middle of the tank. And the premise behind it was that the water would uh, be swirling around this whole thing, staying mixed up, and then would work its way up uh, through here. And it was always continuously going through a uh, drain. And inside of that, I had put a couple of uh, these grates in here that I had 3D printed and that was to help create a laminar flow in here to settle down the water. That actually worked fairly well but what would happen was as some of the um, particulate would come up in here it would then settle down and then uh, would start accumulating on top of this grate and I was starting to get these thick meshes of uh, goo sitting on top of that. Um, and with this in the center of the tank, I wasn't getting a good swirling in there, so I basically abandoned that feature. And I'll show you uh, how it's all operating now without this. I had a ton of comments in the original video, which I'll post up here, on how I didn't have covers on these. And it was the original plan to put the covers on when I cut them off the top of the tank. So here it is, living proof, I did put covers on there. They also have these uh, nice bulkhead type fittings that uh, I can take a peek inside if I really wanted to without having to pull off the whole cover. So let's see what's going on in here. Mm, that's some good brewing going on in here. If we had smell-o-vision, you know what it smells like? Nothing, because it's doing a great job in here. There's no anaerobic uh, smells. It's just percolating and keeping everything uh, breaking down really nicely. Let's get some of this foam out of the way so you can sort of see what's happening. So you can see I've got a nice little vortex swirl going on in here. I did replace those other troughs that I had in here, the 3D printed ones, just with some regular pieces of PVC piping. Let's see if I get all the muck out of the way. It's just a piece of two inch piping that's um, cut just at an angle. I'm not sure if that angle makes any difference or not, but you can see the, the muck just accumulates on here and along the sides. It doesn't cause any issues at all. And that airlift is doing a great job pulling that water and circulating all that muck through there so it doesn't clog up at all now. And 
And then usually on my monthly procedures, I'll hook this up and uh, drain out about 10 gallons of water out of the setup. And that's enough to lower those uh, water levels down. I'll let these settle down for a couple of hours. The uh, clear water will go back into the system and then the uh, muck at the bottom, I'm actually putting it back into the mineralization tank. So since I've uh, switched over to getting this to work a little bit better, I haven't removed any solids out of the system. Everything's just been breaking down. So that's been seven or eight months now since I've actually uh, had any uh, solids discharged from this system. Now originally I kept this valve open and it just slowly bled um, solids into the mineralization tank but since I've uh, changed that part of the setup um, basically there's no outlet for the mineralization tank so I basically just open up this valve once a day and the solids will then flush into that one uh, by gravity. As long as the uh, water level in the mineralization tank is lower than the uh, water level in the radio filter then the, uh, the solids will work their way over. Over time, that the uh, two will become even. So now you can see the water elevation in here has gone down, so that's enough to be a substantial uh, decrease in elevation compared to the radio flow settler. So I'll have plenty of uh, head pressure to inject more solids into this through that connection pipe. I figured we'd do a little experiment and test the water as it's coming out of the settler versus what I'm getting out of the mineralization tank. It's been a few hours with the water settled down. I really wanted to settle a little bit more, but it's starting to get dark out and I want to finish up recording everything. This will fill up our tube a little differently. Still fairly murky, but it'll be good for testing. I like to let the water run back into the settler so that any solids I do siphon out of the tank will just get picked up in the rest of the system again. And once this settles out, it'll just go directly into the grow beds. And then the rest of the sludge just goes right back into the mineralization tank. Alright, we'll get these all squared away, label them up, and send them off to a lab. Now that the numbers are back from the lab, let's take a look at it. As a reminder, the uh, first column here for the radio flow settler is the water leaving the settler once it's been cleaned and now going to the rest of the system. In the mineralization tank column is the water from the mineralization tank that has settled out a bit to get the sludge out of it. So there's no surprise that there's uh, plenty of nitrates showing up in the system now, along with the ammonium. Phosphorus and the potassium is also increasing. I was a little surprised how much extra calcium there was in here, but going back and checking the specs for the fish feed, it looks like they do add some calcium into that. Magnesium looking good too. Um, we're getting a little extra iron out of this, and along with some uh, manganese. And the rest of the numbers aren't too spectacular. Uh, boron, um, I actually have to add boron into the system once in a while. Uh, zinc goes up a little bit. I'm not sure why that's going up, but um, I have never noticed any increase in zinc overall in the system, so the plants are probably taking some of that up. Uh, pH is down substantially, which is no surprise during the mineralization process. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the results of this. Uh, the real question remains is if it's worth the energy to run the pump to uh, get a few extra nutrients out 
where I could just take the solids and dump them out in my field. Uh, we don't have a big problem with having to deal with uh, waste management like some people might have in a urban area. So it's just a thought on whether it's worth that energy or just adding some extra food or uh, offsetting things with extra nutrients. Once again, thanks for watching.